Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to another Sandbox Experiment, where we're actually on a brand new version of the game yet again since our previous episode, with all of the bears and penny cat. We are on version 1.1.6 now, and that adds some of the features that were missing from the previous version. So we have a brand new gene, a brand new snout, and we also have the termite hills in the savanna to take a look at. So a new way for us to gather insects, which actually has quite a bit to do with the new snouts in our genes. So the new snout that we have to experiment with, I believe it's called the sticky tongue. Yeah, so this thing right here, you can probably tell from the picture that it actually looks like a little anteater snout, and it is so, so cute. So it gives us a plus two in insect collecting and a plus two in smelling too. I guess that means it's, well, it's about the same as the bat head, though the bat head gives us extra hearing. So aside from the eyesight debuff, it sounds like it might be a little bit stronger, but still this snout is going to be perfect for the new termite mounds. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. We'll place it into both of these slots just in case the dominance messes up here. So show us our very first little anteater. Oh my goodness, with the toxic body too. Look at little Isri. It would probably be easier to see if we took off the patterns as well. So let's see if we can find that somewhere inside these genetics. There we go, no pattern for you, and we'll probably want to change her over to the lean body too, because I would imagine that will go to the burning savanna, and we need to make sure that she's going to be able to survive there. Oh my gosh, she is adorable! That big long snout is going to be perfect for scooping up tons and tons of termites, so I can't wait to try her out. So yeah, if we're going to make a creature who would be good for the burning savanna, We'll want to make sure that she has plenty of heat resistance on her. That means the big ears, of course. Maybe we should make her quick, too. I suppose we could always make her a partner who has strength, so he would be like her bodyguard. That way, if any Bergenas come tumbling out of the darkness, she won't succumb to them instantly. So yeah, we'll give her some running legs so she can zip to and fro. She can pick up all of those termites before they skitter off somewhere else. Oh, when we have to give her the savanna horns, too. I wonder what these actually look like on the sticky tongue. Nice and majestic. She'll be as graceful as a gazelle. Alright, so here's our first little savanna explorer. I decided to give her the big stinky tail because, if I remember correctly, anteaters usually have some nice big long tails, too. So I thought that would be pretty fitting. Her earthy fur should help her blend into the savanna grass. And she is going to be super, super quick. With the two running legs, the lean body, I don't think anybody is going to be able to catch up with her anytime soon. But we definitely want to make sure that we give her a good partner who can protect her if any trouble does arise. And I'm actually wondering if maybe we should place the bat snout onto him? Just like Bruce from our previous episode. Since it does have insect collecting too, I'm curious if he's going to be able to swoop in and take some of those termites as well. So we might as well give it a try. The only difference is we'd best make sure that he can actually attack. So that means he's not going to have the bat wings like Bruce. And instead we're going to give him one of these Baryena claws and one of the runner's legs too. Two Baryena claws would probably make it a little bit too difficult for him to get around. So we're going to see how he does. I even give him the big hammer tail too in case anybody sneaks up from behind him. So Nunu Duke should be ready to travel with Isreem, and these two are going to see if they can find any unique information about the termite mounds. They have added a brand new settings tab to the options too, and apparently this allows us to decide if we don't want certain creatures to spawn on our islands. So for example, if we want to get rid of the rogue males, we could actually click on this, and they shouldn't be able to spawn in our islands anymore. I'm assuming that most of these things, though, most of them we're probably not going to see on the burning savanna anyways. Friendly meat-eating plants, fir trees, those would still be in different lands. But this is a great way to refine your challenges even more. Ah, uh, look at this, our first taste of the termite hills. It looks like there's going to be two different types. Harmless termite hills and normal termite hills, too. So I guess we're going to have to have a very keen eye to find the right ones. All of these settings just have me thinking about more challenges that we can make in the future. You could actually turn off berry bushes from spawning, too. So maybe you could only gather from the toxic berry bushes, 
or even the other dangerous plants of the jungle. It looks like you could even turn off the bunnies from spawning too, so that would leave your tribe purely focused on the plants that they could gather from instead. Very, very interesting, but I think for now this is probably good. The only other setting that I really tweaked was the age duration. I knocked that up a little bit so we wouldn't have to worry about our creatures passing away while we're exploring. Everything else is exactly the same. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more food again because I know how difficult the burning savanna can be. So we'll call this setting the termite hunters, I guess. A bug lover and our bodyguard. And now let's head off to the burning savanna. So that's part of the medium islands. And we've actually been here once, only during Adam's quest, and that was actually where Melody was first introduced in our lore. So it makes me think that she must have been hard at work here, creating new ways for her followers to survive. But of course, we know from experience that Melody can also be very, very cruel at times. So I guess it makes sense that some of her termite hills are also just as harmful. But here we are, you two. The Burning Savannah. Oh, have we not been here since these new trees were added to the game? I'm not sure if we had quite so many trees on our version of the Burning Savannah before, but oh my gosh, this island is massive. Did this island double in size? There is no way it was this big before. You guys have a lot of traveling to do. Maybe we should have given you the wings. It's going to be pretty tricky for you to get around, I guess. But at least your six in strength is going to help keep little Isri safe. She definitely needs it. So first things first, let's sniff around with you two. Oh, and right off the bat, two termite mounds. Well, I think it's pretty safe to say which one is the harmful one and which one is safe for us to experiment with. Oh, can you actually see the little termites crawling around on the mound from here? Ooh, interesting. They must be deep inside. I wonder if that's something that they can hear, too. Well, I know who's going to be most curious about this. Isri, let's have you tiptoe over here so you can get a closer look at the termite mount. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Is there anything that you can do with it? Aside from grabbing the termites, oh. We have to crack open the termite nest first. So you can't stick your little sticky tongue in there and grab some of them up? That's too bad. I guess it's a good thing that we gave Nunu Duke so much strength then. It looks like he's going to need to crack these open for you. So go ahead and use that mighty bear Yuna claw of yours to open this up for her. And then we'll see what she can do with it now. Alright, so he knocked it down a bit. And that gives us easy access to all of the bugs inside. So we can collect insects from the broken, harmless termite hill. Well, go ahead and grab a few then. It looks like that's going to give us two insects each time. I wonder if maybe eventually it'll run out? Or if we can just keep collecting from this until they rebuild it again. Nope. Nope. Good job, Nunu Duke. You greedy little Gus. It looks like you picked up the very last of those termites. So now Isri is going to be forced to check out the other termite hill next. I wonder if maybe we should consider breeding them too? I mean, since we do have a permanent nest right over here, and since the wildfires haven't started yet, it might be a good idea for us to have a baby between these two, so we can see which one of these snouts is more dominant. Ah, uh, Nunu Duke. I gave him the medium body, because I was hoping that would be enough to keep him resistant from all of this heat but it looks like he's still slowing down a little bit. So we'll have Isri jump her way into the nest, right next to the berry bushes too, so at least you have a couple of little morsels to keep you tied over. And we're not going to mess with anything inside the mutation menu, we'll just let them breed from here, and we'll see which snout their baby ends up inheriting. But at least we know that they're going to be a little bug lover just like their parents all the same. Oh, it looks like the sticky tongue is more dominant. Oh my gosh! In the portrait, she's so tiny! She's so tiny that she can actually fit in this entire thing now? Oh, is that an actual change or is it a glitch? I mean, honestly, I kind of like it. She looks so tiny and sweet over here in the corner. Little La Messy. Well, pretty soon you're going to be hunting down the termites too. 
though after this harmful termite mound... Yeah, I would imagine that your mother is going to be a little bit cautious when she approaches these later. So for the sake of science, let's see what the harmful termite mound does. We can crack it open, and aside from the fact that the silhouette is red, it doesn't really give us any other clues. So if you're not paying attention to your other senses, you might not notice that this thing is different at all. So Nunu Duke, come on over here and crack it open for us. I wonder if this is where it's going to hurt him. Maybe the termites are going to bite him or something? Oh, they certainly are. Swarmed by termites! This animal is being swarmed by termites. Lick it with another animal to remove them. Alright, so it's kind of like the leeches, I guess? Oh, and do you see that? All of the termites are red inside. Oh! Yeah, that does not look like a delicious snack to eat, does it, Isri? But again, for the sake of science, before we lick off any of the bugs, let's see what this thing is going to do. I would imagine that she's probably going to get swarmed by the termites, too. Yeah, so licking up the termites or just cracking it open is enough to get them pretty angry. Oh, and the poor little baby, she's going to be shocked when we pass the day here, and these two find themselves very, very uncomfortable. So how much damage does that take? Only one day's worth of damage, so kind of just like the leeches in a way. Well, let's have Nunu Duke go ahead and lick those termites off of you. Of course, that, that doesn't give us any extra food. Do you think this works just like the other termite mound too? Oh, and they built this one again. But some new termites have moved in. Oh no, now all of these termite hills are just as harmful as this one. So this might actually be a food source that you would have to rely on if you're in the burning savannah. That could be like a legitimate way to gather food. You would just have to make sure that you have enough creatures nearby to always look off those termites. It doesn't really do that much damage, so I can't see the harm in it. But yeah, I'm curious if we can get rid of all of these termites. Three clicks ought to do it. It seems like we can only gather six termites before all of them are gone. So lick off those for us. You can go ahead and lick off the termites on him too. You know, the poor little baby Lamessi. Are you really going to want anything to do with the termites after this? I mean, maybe she could find us a good termite hill to use? No, there's even a harmful one back here? I mean, at the very least, there are a lot of termite hills in the savannah. I remember having so much trouble during Adam's quest because it was very hard for us to find food out here. There was basically only these shriveled up berry bushes to work with. You can pick from the cactus plant too, but those will harm you as well, and much more so than the termites do. So if they rebuilt this termite mound in just one day, I wonder if maybe this one will grow back in the green. Let's have you two clear out this area, right around the nursery right here, and I guess your little baby can explore a bit further. We'll have her toddle out of the nest, swoop her way over toward those big delicious berries, and she'll spend her days trying to find a safer way for her poor, poor parents to gather food. Oh my goodness, it is literally termite city out here. You guys, I don't think it's going to get any better from here. We have seriously angered the termite gods by cracking open that first hill. So now that this one is grown back, how does it smell from here? Uh, not bad at all. Looks like it's back in the green again. So this one is finally safe for you two to collect from again. Go ahead and scoop up all of those delicious termites for us. And then we'll have La Messi tiptoe her way deep into termite territory. Surrounded by termite mounds on all sides. At least they stick to their own little structures, though. Termite City might be a harsh place, but they won't bother you as long as you don't bother them. Maybe we should consider having another baby between these two as well, as we clear out more of this area around the nursery. I mean, the last thing we need is for another predator to come stumbling out of the darkness. Thankfully, I don't think we're going to see the bears out here. From what I've gathered, it seems like the bears only spawn in the grasslands tiles and we certainly don't have any crosslands to work with out here. So the peaceful bear and the defender bear want nothing to do with Melody, 
but to be honest, they probably wouldn't even last underneath this heat. So skitter on over this way, Lamessi. Anything else out here? Now it looks like this is probably the heart of Termite City, so this might be all that you two have to work with. We'll scoot your mother over to this nest so she can gather up some of those extra berries, perhaps. And then it's time for Nunu Duke to carve out the pathway behind you. So yeah, let's go ahead and skip the turn again. We'll make sure that the last baby wasn't a fluke. Nope, it looks like the sticky tongue is still far more dominant than the bat head. So I would imagine that the bat head is probably going to be pretty hard for us to breed into our tribes. Now because we started the game with these snouts, I wonder if they'll already be unlocked in our mutation menu. Oh, maybe not. It looks like it actually unlocked the hammer tail and the baryena claw instead. The two traits on Nunu Duke. So we might be able to find the new genes in here after all, just to see how we could unlock them in a normal game. So first, if we could find the bat head, we have to collect 40 insects to unlock the bat head. And then as for the sticky tongue, we only need to collect 20 insects, but we have to spend 20 days in a hot climate too. I wonder if that means that anybody could collect from the termite hills. Because if you don't have either of these traits, I would think it would be pretty hard for you to survive in the savannah. Maybe we should have gone for a third creature? Or maybe somebody else will spawn out here. Somebody without any bug collecting skills to their name. Because I do definitely want to see if they can knock these down for us and if they can try their hand at collecting. Kind of like how we can unlock the cracker jaw just from trying to pick up acorns. Even if it doesn't actually add to our food supplies. So maybe hearing poor little La Messi's cries overnight is going to lure somebody out from hiding. Because I'm not sure that we're going to find any stumps out here to call another creature from. So aside from the snout genes, we should also have the Savannah horns inside here too. And for those, we need to spend 30 days in a hot climate and perform 30 attacks. Basically the opposite of the antlers. It looks like the bat wings are just like the normal wings. In order to unlock this in our mutation menu, we have to have a creature in our tribe who already has one. So I wonder if that means we could find the bat wings inside the glaciers too? Sometimes you can find wings inside the glaciers, and the wings are also very common on Whale Island. So where do you think the bat wings would be? I mean, if the bats in general are going to thrive in the savannas, or even inside the swamps, I wonder if that would be the best place to find them. If you guys have run into any bat creatures in your explorations, then feel free to let me know, because I would like to try to find some wild bats in the world too. If that's the only way for us to unlock them, then they must be hiding out here somewhere. So go ahead and pick up some extra food for your baby. Is this one angry again? Yep, it definitely is. I wonder if it alternates or if it's going to be random, kind of like the carnivorous plants of the jungle. So go ahead and skip the day again as your little baby grows. Oh, and this is what I was worried about. Oh no, it seems your cries of pain, the messy, have actually attracted the attention of a predator and her baby. They probably think that they can get a pretty easy meal out of you guys. But what they don't know is Nunu Duke has been training for this his entire life. He is the bodyguard of this operation. Unfortunately, without help, he's going to struggle, since he has lost a little bit of energy, but I think we could probably find a way to work around that. If we have little Kuroku come up behind him, that way he'll be nice and protected. Perhaps even hiding right behind the cactus plant. We should be able to have Isri sweep around the opposite side. Ooh, but the Baryena's blocking her. No, I forgot about that. I was hoping she could cut a pathway for her daughter to use, but it looks like she's going to come up just short as well. Oh, and aside from that, have we literally blocked this poor Baryena into jail here? Surrounded on all sides. I guess her only chance of escape would be directly behind her if there's nothing on this tile right here. And I guess if her baby decides to move too. But you know, Lamessi, if you scoot on over here, you might be able to block the baby in as well. So go ahead and clear out some of the grass and then we'll let Nunu Duke finish off the job. If he is truly our bodyguard, then we need to make sure that he takes down at least one predator in his time. Oh boy. 
and the wildfires have started too. Well, you know, it will be pretty interesting to see how they interact with the termite hills. I wonder if they're going to burn those down as well, or if Melody will show us a little bit of kindness and maybe these will be our only food supplies remaining. A little bit tough to work with, but still food nonetheless. So go ahead and take the Baryena down for us, pick up all of that Baryena meat, we'll lick your wounds of course, and then we might as well invite this little baby Baryena into our tribe. A baby Baryena in a land full of anteaters. You are going to have to learn to enjoy the taste of termites pretty quickly, because I think that's about all that we have for you. Oh, and it looks like the debuff was actually removed from Lamessi too. Excellent, so even though we didn't lick off the termites, she did still take two days worth of damage. I guess after two days, the termites eventually just skitter off somewhere else. Back home to Termite City. So all in all, I'm really impressed with this new update to the Savannah. I mean, you guys probably remember how barren and lifeless it was before, and surviving in the burning savannah was nearly impossible if you didn't already have a huge supply of food to work with. And while the termite hills certainly aren't easy mode, because they seem to spawn in a harmful manner much more so than the normal ones, it's still food that's more stable than the berry bushes, and a bit less painful than the cactus. I'd imagine that these termite hills will even spawn in places like the grass mingle, if it works like all of the other entities in this game, then I'm sure as long as you have some savanna tiles around, we'll see a couple of these termites crawling around too. Not to mention, the sticky tongue is absolutely adorable, and I can't wait to unlock it in some of our other tribes. So I think that's where we're going to end it for our termite experiment. And next time, I'd like to bring us to the complete opposite end of the spectrum and go back to the mountains. I have seen screenshots of the new bears in the mountains too, so I thought maybe we could get together a little bear party, see how all three of the different bears, and maybe the Baryenas too if they want to get involved, will interact with each other, especially because it seems like the defender bear really doesn't like violence, and violence coming from any side, so creatures attacking us or us attacking rabbits, and I think poor Bruce knows that the best. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!